Is there any difference between a dipole and a doublet? Well, yes there is, but no there isn't. <laughs> Surely both answers can't be right? Well, let's take a look. Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. My name's Peter Waters and my amateur radio call sign is Golf 3 Oscar Julian Victor. Glad you could uh, join me. Before we talk about antennas, what's the latest news? Well, the Texan uh, radio that I did, the portable radio, that will come back into stock at the end of uh, this month. This is January 2021, so we should have those back in stock in about 14 days time. The uh, spy video that I did, <laughs> it's now hit 55,000 views. And if you're one of the few people that hasn't watched that video, I'll put a link underneath this video so you can take a look for yourself. But yeah, 55,000 views, quite amazing. I suppose the big news uh, this month is that the Yaesu FT DX10 has come into stock. Uh, we've actually got through our first delivery. It's uh, quite an interesting radio. Uh, Yesu announced it at the end of November and uh, they're almost on time with delivery. They said December. Well, you know, we'll give them a little bit of uh, leeway and they got it to us uh, at the beginning of January. Uh, it's a uh, competitor for the IC7300 in many ways. Uh, it's SDR, although it's not SDR all the way through. It's a super head front end with SDR at the back end. So Yesu have decided to go sort of half and half. And it's also got some extra bells and whistles on it. But of course, the Yesu FTDX10 is going to cost you an extra £400, so you need to compare the specification with that and any other radio you're considering. But you know, there's one thing I've always said, and I'll repeat it again, is that it doesn't matter how much or how little you spend on the radio, without an antenna, you're not going to make any contacts at all. So let's get back to our subject. Dipole or doublet? That is the question. First we'll take a look at the dipole. We've got a dipole here on the screen fed with coax cable. Now I've ignored a ballon for the moment because I want to keep it simple. So this dipole is resonant on 40 meters and is 67 foot long. And the thin line shows the current distribution. And as you see at the center, the current is at the maximum and at the ends it's at the minimum. And as we know from Ohm's law, that if you have a high current, you've got a, a low resistance. And if you've got a high resistance, you've got a low current. So it, it stands to reason that the center of the dipole is a low impedance. And I think uh, many of you will know that the center of a dipole is around about 50, 60, 70 ohms. So it makes a good match for 50 ohm cable. And of course, the actual impedance of the dipole is also dependent on its height. But anyway, we'll, we'll assume that it's a fairly good match because it's resonant, it's a half wave long, and it's typically, let's say it's 30 foot above ground. So we'll get a VSWR of 1.3, 1.4, I would guess. Well, now we've replaced it with ladder line, but in actual fact, not much has changed. The dipole, of course, is the same length, so therefore the current distribution is exactly the same and the only thing that's changed is the method of feeding it and in fact the polar pattern the um, radiation uh, pattern is exactly the same both antennas radiate at uh, 90 degrees from the run of the antenna so we've proved the point there is no difference between a dipole and a doublet well, that's not quite true, because things change when we change the length of the dipole. So if we look at the coax-fed dipole, we know that at resonance, half wavelength, it's got a low impedance and it matches very well the coax cable. But as soon as we change the length of that dipole, things happen. You see, the 
coax fed dipole depends on the coax seeing a really nice match. As soon as we change the length of the radiating element, either shortening it or lengthening it, that nice comfortable match doesn't exist anymore. The impedance and reactance changes and the VSWR rises. And we know that when the VSWR rises, losses increase. And as losses increase, so the signal strength is reduced. So a dipole is very happy when it's resonant, but it's not so happy when it's not resonant. And that's where the doublet scores. So let's take a look at the doublet. So I've got a doublet here which I'm going to put up on the screen. Now there is a very important difference. If that radiating element, the horizontal top section, is changed, it's either made shorter or longer, it doesn't affect the resonance because the resonance really is determined by the horizontal element plus the feeder section. And you can see the basic current I've drawn there. Again, the top section is actually a 40 meter dipole, but that's so we can have a comparison with the uh, coax fed dipole. Now it's not even relevant to talk about resonance when we come to a doublet because there is no resonance as such. You'll notice at the bottom of the feeder is the antenna tuner or antenna matcher. Now sometimes you hear somebody talk about the doublets um, that can be tuned. Well it can't really be tuned, it can be matched. That unit at the bottom, although it's popularly called an antenna tuner unit, the correct term would be matching unit, but let's not get to uh, into that one. The point is that that unit at the base, that matching unit, matches and tunes out the reactants presented by the ladder line. So in many ways that radiating element, the top horizontal section, has very little bearing on how the antenna will perform in terms of whether it will accept or not accept power. We can change the length of that top section, make it shorter or longer, and then simply adjust the matching unit to take up the slack, so as to speak. And likewise, of course, we can move the frequency around. We can change the frequency of the transmitter or transceiver, move around the band and even onto another band. And all we need to do is to adjust that matching unit. And once that's uh, adjusted, the antenna will accept power and that top section will radiate. So now you're beginning to see that if somebody says to you is a doublet a dipole the answer is yes and no. And you should by now be getting quite excited because obviously the doublet is a great antenna if you want something simple that would cover all the bands. But there's one important thing that you really need to know with a doublet and that is that if you change frequency or you change the length of that top section, the result is not only that you have to adjust your matching unit, but also the horizontal radiation pattern changes. So as you lengthen the antenna beyond the classic dipole half wave, you'll find that the horizontal pattern starts to break up and eventually it becomes like a a four leaf clover. Now that can be useful because sometimes you're in a situation where you can only have the dipole or the, the uh, top element going in one direction and you don't actually want to radiate at 90 degrees to the run of the antenna. Well you can adjust the length of the antenna so that you get this sort of break up so you get this clover leaf pattern. And of course the same thing applies that uh, if for example you've got a 40 metre top section, in other words a 20 metre half wavelength, in other words you've got a 67 foot top section which is a classic 40 metre dipole. If you start to move frequency, say you go out to the 20 metre band, you'll start to get this clover leaf pattern. Now it's quite interesting actually, it's, it's almost a subject in itself, but basically as the pattern changes, 
So you start to get nulls and a bit of gain. So you may find that you're losing signal by a couple of dB in one direction, but you're getting a little bit of gain in another direction. So it's interesting to actually look at the different patterns for different lengths of antenna. Now I've shown the doublet as a very simple antenna. You've got the top section, you've got the ladder line, and you've got the matching unit. The question is really, how do you get that ladder line into the house? Well, I have done a video on it before. Basically, you need to insert a ballon. And really, it doesn't really matter whether it's a four to one or one to one ballon because the, the impedance and so forth will, will change as the ladder line changes. So a ballon of four to one or one to one will work okay. You terminate the ladder line on the ballon just outside the uh, a house, you have a hole through the wall, you have a short length of carex going into the house and into the matching unit. Now there will be quite a high VSWR on some bands on that bit of carex, but it doesn't matter because the carex is only going to be five or six or eight foot long and any losses that result are going to be absolutely negligible. And of course the other thing that I should have mentioned, which I think probably you, you probably know by now anyway, that the losses on ladder line are negligible. So you've got quite a fish, an efficient antenna there that is agile. You can move around the band or move from band to band. And it's a very, very good answer to uh, a smallish garden. Now let's move on from that as well. I mentioned going higher in frequency. This 67 foot antenna, you can move higher in frequency, just adjust the matching unit. But you can get, you can go lower in frequency and you can go significantly lower in frequency. It depends entirely on the length of the ladder line and how the matching unit can cope. But I would suggest that if you're operating on 40 meters, you can probably operate on 60 meters quite easily. And you may even be able to squeeze um, a match on 80 meters. I have done it myself. I've operate, operated on 80 meters with a 67 foot top section. Now, it's not going to be as good because quite clearly the radiating element is getting shorter. It's almost like a, a loaded dipole. And in fact, what's actually happening is the ladder section is acting almost like a, a loading coil or put it another way, the antenna is folding in on itself. But the fact is that if you have a 67 foot top section, and that, that measurement is not critical. That measurement is not critical. It'll be 68 foot, 69 foot, 62 foot. You may well be able to get it to match on 80 meters. Forget 160, it probably won't work. But it's an interesting experiment, and you can sometimes juggle about with the length of the ladder line to try and achieve that, uh, that match on the uh, low band. Let's finally have a look at this hypothetical 40 meter element, the uh, uh, half wave on 40 meters, which is 67 feet, which is around about 20 meters. If you look on the screen now, you'll see that if we feed it with 40 meter energy, it acts as a half wave. That's on the left hand side, top left hand side. If we then feed it with energy uh, on 20 meters, in other words, we feed it with a 20 meter transmission we get the beginnings of the clover leaf, which you see is the pattern changes somewhat. If we feed it uh, on 15 meters, which is then the three half waves, we get a slightly more complex pattern. And the most interesting and complex, I suppose, is 10 meters where it acts as two full waves. So that gives you some idea of the radiation pattern and how it can be quite versatile um, in terms of either lengthen the antenna to make it half wave or full wave, or alternatively moving the transmission. And I know from previous discussions on antennas, I've been asked time and time again about wire. It doesn't matter what wire you use, um, assuming it's going to be copper, copper wire of some sort. I prefer to use PVC wire because <clears throat> it looks better, it's protected from the elements. I'm not a keen a user of a couple, bare copper wire and for the um, feeder for the ladder line my favorite is 450 ohm ladder line 
which um, is by far and away the most effective uh, way of feeding a doublet and uh, that's my recommendation. Now there are some other tricks that you can get up to with uh, doublets and I'll come back to that in a, in a coming video. Uh, one or two experiments you want to consider and uh, play about with when the weather gets better. It's freezing cold here at the moment so we're in uh, early January and down here in the south we've had frosts and I know up in the Midlands and the north you've had snow and ice and it's certainly not the time to go out in the garden and play about with aerials unless of course you are really determined and I can remember as a youngster going out in all sorts of weather because I was determined to get my antennas to work I had raincoats and caps and whatever I had on and you know, came in soaking wet but I was glad that I managed to get the antenna working. Well those days have gone, I'm not so agile now and I'm not so determined that I can't, can't wait for the weather to improve. But anyway, it will come. In the meantime, thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it's been informative. Don't forget, keep safe, that's very important at the moment, keep safe and we'll meet again very shortly in the next video. Don't forget to press the subscribe button if you want to be alerted when the next video comes up. But until then, take care. Speak soon. Bye.